1985 featured two versions of A View to a Kill, one of which being an interactive fiction game produced by Mindscape and developed by Angelsoft Incorporated. Mindscape was in a rut by losing millions of dollars since its startup in 1983. They were eventually bought out in 1987, but not until publishing a sequel, or technically a prequel, to A View to a Kill in 1986. The author of the text for A View to a Kill, Raymond Benson, was brought back to write the story for their next game, Goldfinger. At this point in the Bond franchise, they were between actors, with Roger Moore leaving the role and Timothy Dalton taking over. Roger Moore, now 59, was ready to step down after 12 years of playing 007. Interestingly enough, Remington Steel star Pierce Brosnan was supposed to be the next Bond, but NBC renewed his contract on the show instead. Timothy Dalton was officially announced to be the next Bond in late 1986, shortly after the release of Goldfinger, the interactive fiction game. If you've seen my episode on the A View to a Kill interactive fiction, you can guess that this will probably be a very short episode. Also, I mean, you can see what the length of the video is already, but I digress. Goldfinger was released sometime in mid-1986 and was made for MS-DOS, Macintosh, and Apple II computers, just like A View to a Kill was. While Raymond Benson was the author of the story and design, it was a relatively loose representation of Fleming's story, more so replicating the screenplay of the film. Benson eventually left the project before it was completed, and Goldfinger remains to be one of the harder, if not the hardest, Bond game to find. Ian Fleming wrote Goldfinger in 1959, and it was his seventh Bond novel. It was eventually adapted to film as the third in the series in 1964, starring Sean Connery. It is still regarded by many as the best film in the entire series. It was a massive hit at the time, and it's the third highest grossing film in the series, with a budget of $3 million and brought in about $125 million. If someone wanted to be introduced to the Bond series and they didn't want to watch them in production order, most fans would agree that Goldfinger is where they should begin. So naturally, if an older film in the series was to be the next interactive fiction game, Goldfinger was a pretty safe choice. Goldfinger deals with a gold smuggling tycoon named Auric Goldfinger, played by Gert Frobe, who plots to contaminate all the gold in Fort Knox so the value of his gold skyrockets. 007 is brought in to investigate. The film is known for many iconic images, moments, and characters, such as Goldfinger's infamous henchman Oddjob, who can throw his hat as a deadly weapon, the introduction of the Aston Martin DB5, Jill Masterson's death by being painted gold, an emphasis on Q implementing gadgets into Bond's arsenal of weaponry, and of course, Pussy Galore, played by Honor Blackman. So unfortunately for this episode, there's honestly not a whole lot to say about the game itself. As I discussed in part 2, interactive fiction games are text-based and are played through the use of typing out words in order to progress through the story. Except this time, the font is in GOLD! Also, as I stated before, these games really aren't for me. The game starts at a point that's pretty far into the film as you're driving away from Goldfinger's henchman in the Aston Martin. The introductory paragraph states, Your brand new silver Aston Martin streaks down a dark alpine road. A glance in the rearview mirror reflects several sets of bright headlights closing in fast. You step on the gas, determined to escape and continue your surveillance of suspected gold smuggler, or Goldfinger. The aristocratic blonde beside you grips your arm as you spin through a turn. Moonlight and fear race across her face. Tilly Masterson out to avenge her sister's death. Another naive beauty in over her head. A treacherous hairpin turn lies dead ahead to the west. You break, wrestling the wheel for control. The lead Mercedes roars its approach. One of the Koreans inside leans out and takes aim. Gunfire rakes the dirt road around you, but your cool nerve cancels fear. Your Bond, James Bond, 007, and License to Kill. This is the game you know best. It's time to even the odds and see what this car can do. Damn, you think to yourself as you reach for the armrest. Next time I take a car from Q Branch, I really should listen to Q. So obviously I'm not going to read the entire game, I'll leave it at that. It plays exactly the same as A View to a Kill or any other interactive fiction game really. Plus, there is another implied sex scene between Bond and Pussy Galore through the use of the phrase, Time Passes, after Bond forces a kiss on her just like with Bond and Mayday in the previous game. It's an extremely short game if you know what you're doing and it can go by very fast. And well, that's really all I got. Check it out if you want to play an extremely shortened version of Goldfinger through interactive fiction. Next time, we will be back to basics with a more traditional computer game. 
We will now have entered the Timothy Dalton era in 1987, and we will embark on the second James Bond video game movie tie-in. Please be sure to like and subscribe to keep in touch with future parts in this retrospective. Each game from now on should be a bit more interesting than this one. James Bond will return in the living daylights. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die.